Excel accounting practice problem. Adjust worksheet for adjusting entries. Get ready because we're about to excel. So we are in our Excel worksheet in prior presentations. We put together the worksheet from a blank sheet. Now continuing to enter transactions into it. If you have access to it, there's two tabs on down below. An example tab and a practice tab. Practice tab starting out where we left off last time. Example tab in essence being an answer key. Let's stay here on the practice tab for now. Last time we were entering data for the second month of operations. We got a little bit fancy with the trial balance over here where we had the beginning balance for the month of February, the year to date information for the two months of activity that we had put in place, the entries that were going to impact both the current month and the year to date information, and then the ending balance for February, ending balance for the year to date. We saw some differences down here where the differences would be applied out on the income statement accounts, the temporary accounts, as the income statement would be starting over from from when we're looking at just the month of February versus the year to date information having the year to date information this kind of change would be something that software could often do if you're running a balance sheet and an income statement by simply changing the date ranges so you want to get kind of accustomed to that component or that concept we're now going to be converting this however to a worksheet for the adjusting entries now adjusting entries are often something that you could think of as being done by like an outside CPA firm or as at least a separate process in your mind. You want to be thinking of it as in essence a separate process. Oftentimes you'll be exporting the information from like a software like QuickBooks in a trial balance format and setting up a worksheet similar to this in Excel even if you're using accounting software so that you can think about more clearly just couple entries the few entries that you're going to be needing for the adjusting entry process so basically we're going to we're going to adjust this worksheet to an a worksheet typically seen in an adjusting entry process which is similar to this it's going to look something like this over on the example side where we're just going to be looking at the year to date information for our practice purposes here so we're going to get everything correct as of the cutoff date for the two month period ended on February 28th and then we'll typically call the first column the column that we might be printing from if it was in a QuickBooks software or some accounting software the the unadjusted trial balance for the year to date numbers here always as of the cutoff as of the end of the period in this case that cutoff being February it might often be the end of the year December 31st oftentimes for a calendar year company still just entering that information directly into say QuickBooks or some worksheet so that you can then focus in on the adjustments that need to be made in the worksheet possibly outside of the software and then enter the information back into the software then we'll have our adjusting entries so we're focusing in here just on those entries that are adjusting entries period in entries we want to keep a separation in our mind about those entries that are used for adjusting entries as compared to normal accounting process entries so that we we know what we're doing with regards to those things that are done at the end of the period to make our financial statements as correct as possible on whatever basis we are using typically an accrual basis for reporting purposes. And then we'll have our adjusted trial balance at the end. So that's going to be the format of the worksheet. Let's go back on, on over to the practice tab here. So to do that, I'm just going to first, I'm not going to delete these cells, but I'm just going to hide the entire column. So I'm going to hide this column and select it and just right click on it and hide that column well before i do that let's undo that first let's let's take our ending balances and copy them over to the beginning balances and then we'll clean out this middle section so i'm going to take the ending balances where we left off last time just going to copy those Control c and paste them right here in my beginning balances and this will be our starting point worksheet for the adjusting entries process and then i'll just basically delete this activity in the middle we will remove the activity in the middle. And so there is our worksheet. Now I'm going to hide the February information and just look at the year to date information. So I'm going to hide the beginning trial balance for February, right click and hide it. And then I'm going to hide the ending balance for February, right click and hide it. These ending balances then are simply taking the beginning balance here and then adding the entries to it. Then I'm just going to adjust the names of this thing. I'm going to call the first item the unadjusted trial balance. And you could think about that. Whatever accounting system you're using, you think about that 
That's the trial balance that has been done after the accounting department has done all the normal type of data input and typically after the bank reconciliation has been completed, but we have not yet entered any of the adjusting entries to it. So there's no difference, in other words, from the trial balance to any other trial balance that would be created during the time frame, except for the timing of when it was created. It was created after the data input for the period and after generally the bank uh, the bank reconciliation, but the adjusting entries, the things that we have planned to do on a periodic basis at the end of the month or year have not yet been done. Then I'm going to call these adjusting entries, adjusting entries, and then this is going to be the adjusted, adjusted trial balance. And that's going to be the typical terminology that you will see. Now note that some worksheets that you'll look at for this kind of adjusting process will have a very large, very intimidating worksheet because they'll basically put two columns for the for the unadjusted two columns for the adjusting entries two columns for the adjusted trial balance and that's because of course you traditionally have the, the debits and credits on the left and right hand side but again just if you're working in excel that is a very tedious worksheet to to look at and it really complicates the the calculations of the formulas uh, in that in that format so if you're working in excel you greatly simplify the problem by basically saying, I'm going to put the credits, representing the credits as negative in the same column, allowing you to do the data input a lot more easily and do your check figure more easily. So even if you have to, to manually create this, typing in the accounts from something from a database program or a piece of paper, then it's easy to check that you're in balance by getting to the bottom down here and saying, I'm just going to use a simple what a mathematician would call more elegant type of type of formula, an easy formula, which is just the sum function to determine whether I'm in balance rather than summing up one column, summing up the other column, and then subtracting the two, which is a lot more steps. We can also do things a lot more easily this way by simply selecting, say, the income statement and looking at net income down here, which has a credit balance, just double clicking on it, in other words, and you've got the net income calculation. I can add up the assets even with the contra asset there and just select those items and have the most simple type of calculation as opposed to taking the debits minus the credits. So it's really, uh, in my opinion, and I think it's clearly, you know, if you if you work with the two worksheets, you'll find that you'll find this one's going to be a lot faster than working with a worksheet that has six columns that does the same the same type of thing and then having to use formulas to double check things which are using you know, not not just addition right you're using a lot more complex formulas in order to calculate it so this is the worksheet that i would recommend it'll also be a lot easier when we make the financial statements if you've been working in the past you've seen the financial statement creation i think in this format of a trial balance in excel is far and away easier than making financial statements from another format of the trial balance such as one breaking out the debits and credits and not using credits in a negative format okay so we have that then we're going to do the adjusting entries now remember the adjusting entries are always done at the end of the period so we're going to have our cutoff date here it's going to be for the end of the month they're planned entries they are not something that basically we're fixing we're fixing the accounting department's problem because they messed things up no we we want the accounting department to do the things that they did typically for normal kind of adjusting entries and we're planning then to do an adjusting entry at the end of the period in order to make the accounting data input as easy and efficient as possible as well as to be able to report and show things as of the reporting dates end of the month and end of the year typically on the most accurate accrual basis as possible so their planned type of activities they will typically have a balance sheet account and an income statement account related to them and they will typically not be including cash remember we reconciled cash so it's pretty good to go these are going to be items that are not typically including cash they're typically going to have a timing component to them therefore they're going to usually have an income statement account related to it and a balance sheet account related to it. Those are the general rules you can kind of expect for the adjusting entries. So before we start as well, I'm going to adjust the columns on the left hand side. I'd like to make a nice clean sheet that we're just going to be working adjusting entries on. So I'm going to be copying from Z to CH. I'm going to copy that and I'm going to paste that in into the skinny right here. I'm going to right click 
and insert, I'm not going to paste, I'm going to right click on the skinny and insert the copied cells. And then I'm going to copy the skinny over here, copy the skinny. And I'm going to put that right before the AD. So I'm going to add it <laughs> right before the AD. I'm going to right click and insert the copied cells. So there we have the skinny and then I'm going to hide everything to the left. So I'm going to put my cursor on column on the skinny, go to the Z, right click and hide all of that stuff. And then this stuff I don't need. It's not being posted anywhere. I'm going to select it and I'm going to go up to the to the format painter, format paint it because I don't want these indentations to mess us up. And then I'll just paint brush this all the way down so we have a nice clean blue slate that we'll be working on and then I'm just going to delete the activity so that now we have this clean blue slate so we'll be entering these transactions into the to the adjusting entry worksheet that's typically how you'll kind of see it if you're thinking about a traditional adjusting entry kind of system that might be done you know at the at the end of the year by a CPA firm or something like that and then possibly entering it back into the accounting software but we will also be be posting them to the gl because eventually you would then want them posted to the gl so we had been posted to the gl on the right hand side we'll continue with the posting process too now one more thing that i want to point out here is that we will have some reversing uh entries as well so we're going to have sometimes that we need to do a reversing entry and this is going to be important to the adjusting process because remember the goal here we want to adjust things as of the cutoff date to make them correct on an accrual basis but also not mess up the accounting department, which is doing things correctly as efficiently as they want to do them. We want the accounting department to not have to worry about these you know, accrual adjustments when they're doing something like payroll, which is on whatever system the payroll is on. I don't want to make payroll more complicated. So that means that we, when we do our adjusting entries, there might be some of them which we should reverse to get back to the accounting department doing what the accounting department needs to do. We don't want to mess up the accounting department so not all adjusting entries will need reversal but some adjusting entries should and may need reversal in order to make that separation between the data input from the accounting department and the adjusting process clear so what i'm going to do is i'm going to add a couple more cells to the left here and then i'm going to i'm going to make these reversing entries so i'm going to select the skinny on over to aq i'm going to make two more columns right click and let's insert those items i'm going to insert those i'm going to remove the formatting selecting this item and just remove the formatting if you don't see that that's okay it's because we're just going to format just like these two so i'm going to select am to ao format paint them home tab format paint and then i'll just paint brushy that format right there there we have it and I'm going to call these then the reversing entries, reversing, and and then I'll just say these are going to happen. I'm going to put the date here. I'm going to put a colon so we, or a, a apostrophe, whatever that is, so that it will show up 301, the first day of the next period. These are going to be uh, reversing entries. Let's do it this way, reversing entries. And then this is going to be as of that thing 301 the first day of the next period because our cutoff date is uh, February 28th in our practice problem and this will be the trial balance this will be the trial balance as of three let's let's just say equals this thing 301 so then we're just, all I'm going to do is say this is going to be equal to the the adjusted trial balance and then i'm going to basically add the blank cell to it i want to copy that formula down so i'm going to copy it down i'm going to right click on it and copy it but i'm i don't want to i don't want to paste it normal because that'll mess up my colors here so i'm going to i'm going to scroll down and i'm going to right click and paste it just the just the formulas just the formulas and enter so there we have it. So that'll be our, our reversing column. So we'll do our adjusting entries to get to our adjusted trial balance. And then some of those we will reverse. Now I'm not going to post the reversing entries. I'm just going to post the adjusting entries. So hopefully that'll make a little sense. When I say post, I mean post them to the GL on the right-hand side. Hopefully that'll make more sense once we get going. 
Uh, but, and we'll do this one step at a time once we get, once we get on a roll here. And then I want to add another skinny. I need another skinny to give me some space. So I'm going to put my cursor on this skinny. Let's put it on this skinny right here, this one. Copy that. And I'm going to insert that skinny before the, before here, we're going to right click and insert the copied cells. So there we have a skinny between the trial balance and, and our general ledger. So that looks good. And then lastly, down here on the income statement, I'm going to imagine then that this happens on 3-1. All the income statement accounts should basically roll out into equity because now it's after the cutoff date. I'm running the trial balance for just one day. So I'd like to basically close out everything on the income statement. So in other words, I'm going to zero out everything on this side. So nothing on the income statement because it's going to close out. And if I copy my balances over, these ending balances, I'm going to copy these over. I'm going to just copy them over. So now I'm out of balance by the 4770 because that stuff should roll into equity. And I'm going to roll it into equity this way so that it will change as we change our data over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this 77895, go to the end of it. And I'm just going to say plus the sum of all of the activity on the income statement on the adjusted trial balance, which I'm just going to lump together in one lump sum number in equity, like it's closing out because we're closing it out to equity. So now we've got the 82665 on the trial balance after the cutoff, basically running it for one day on 3-1, having closed all of the income statement accounts into it. And we'll see the reversing entries will have an impact over here. And that'll cause us some kind of problems but we'll, we'll explain why exactly we will do the reversing entries the way we will do them so there's there's going to be our worksheet now when we first start out when we're just doing the adjusting entries we will hide columns a to r we'll hide them and just work over here and then when we then go to the reversing entries we'll unhide the reversing entries and then focus in on them as well so i think that's it i think we got a nice clean a nice clean worksheet we're ready we're ready to go uh, next time.